Hey, what's up, guys? It's Nadia Nakai, and welcome to my first episode of Hello, Braga. I am so excited. You know, I'm a busy bitch. Listen, I'm everywhere on your TV screens, on your YouTube, on your app, on your phones, in your speakers. I'm absolutely everywhere. I'm taking all the bags, okay? All of them. <laughs> I have an amazing first guest. An amazing talent, songwriter. I don't know, like he actually puts me in a swoon every time I hear him speak and sing. I have Langa Mavusa as my first guest. Hello. Guys. Hi, friend. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so excited. Are you excited for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm excited for me too. It's going to be good. Like a lot of coins, friend. Yeah. Right? But you have so many already. I want all of them. <laughs> yeah. I want all of them. Can I tell you, my friend? Yeah. Listen, I spoke to some of your friends, eh? Really? Yeah. Do, do you want to know what they told me? What? They told me you have an obsession with tin fish, friend. Why do you no. like tin fish? Tell me about the tin fish. Wow. No, so there's this thing, right? Like, I'm really obsessed with TikTok right now, right? Okay. And there's this girl who's like, who tries out different kinds of tin fish. Yeah. And I think as South Africans, when we think tin fish, we only think of like sardines. And dust. Right? But they actually like have mussels and octopus and like Tint. all different. Babe, like... I'm not doing like basic tin fish. This is not like what you're getting at <laughs> your normal retailer. I'm getting like some, some far ass like. Hold tin on, fish. so is the holding brand tin fish and then it has muscles no. or they're called tin muscles? So they'll come in like different kinds of um not a solution, but like a brine, right? So some of them are like in olive oil like thing with like different kinds of spices or herbs yeah. and so i'll try it out like but like it's very cute i don't know if it's good because your friend also said that you can't cook you like to cook but you can't cook. that's why you're coming with the tin fish hue I what's in the tin fish said this one your friend said no actually uncle and uncle. i'm a great cook <laughs> you love cooking but you actually very sweetie <laughs> 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 I'm gonna get them. I'm gonna get them. Apparently, I, I think I think I'm a good cook. Um, but I, I'm like good at making like specific meals. Mm, like, like I don't like know how to make a lot of things. Okay, so what's your like? Signature? I can make a curry, mm -hmm. oxtail, bolognese, but like black people bolognese. What's black people bolognese? Like with mixed veg in it. Is that like just a bit of black? <laughs> there's beans you know, and some bad, carrots. If you have like a little carrot and a little corn, <laughs> oh, really? then it's black, man. Oh. Because the way that white people have it, it's, it just tastes like tomatoes. Yeah, yeah, I hate the tomato paste. Yeah, it's just Even like tomato, tomato. Tomato paste, yeah. like fully. So mine is like, it's got all the spices oh, it's and got the, the stuff. Yes. And, and the Not acha. Can you put acha and pasta? No. Like pacha asta. <laughs> pacha asta. <laughs> pacha asta. <laughs> Never know. <laughs> no, for real. No. So you're talking no, about like no, six no, no. guns. I don't six man. guns. I don't even have six guns at my house. I've got like spices. I know how to build like the a flavors. You know, I love six guns. Because people who use six guns, they don't know how to build. Oh, so I don't know how to build the flavor. <laughs> I love six guns. Because you're lazy. I am lazy. Because you guys don't even. You guys don't know what paprika is or all of these I things. I know what paprika is. Okay. Paprika is red. Yes. And raja. Raja is a mixture of spices. Oh, so you're saying individuals? Yes. I know um, Portuguese chicken spice. Mixture. Mixture? Yes. Um, Jesus, I know that, cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper is alone. Okay, I know... Yo, let me not expose myself. Anyway, <laughs> tell me something. Yeah? So I heard that you actually dream about getting married to someone from Paris or in Paris. I had a dream for a very long time of... Mm. Um, so I'm in like primary school. And I didn't like sports, right? Yeah. And so the only sport that I ended up taking up was badminton. Because I just thought of it as this like white elite sport. Like I, I imagine that that's what they play. Yeah. Um, like in the Kensington Gardens or something. So I was like... But that's I'm the UK, to, not Paris. UK, no. That was still UK then. Oh. And then I got this brilliant idea. I was like, I actually want to get married in Paris. Mm -hmm. And then my kids will spend six months in France. And then six months in South Africa. Oh, so it's not that you want to get married to a French man. It's no. okay if he's from South Africa. Ah, you just want to go there and get married. I can't do the parlez-vous like, for too long. I know, like, they don't like people that speak no, English. No, because they only like to speak their own language. Um, and I generally like South African men. Like, I just like, those are my guys. 
Sure, that makes one That's of my us. juice. Like, uh, if that. we go down to Guazulu, like, yes, see, I'm happy. Wow, wow, wow. I'm we can very count me happy out of it. there. Count me out. Well, I'm officially done with SA Men. Like, the, my I last one been, was my last on, one. I'm man. absolutely done. It makes one of us friend. SA no Bruce. No ways. America still showed you flames. No, didn't. I got the podium, <laughs> firstly. And it was because of South Africa because we got banned because we were creating new variants of the COVID. Who decides that South Africa is to be that ambitious to create new strains as we're, Africans? It's because we're those kinds of people, I'm though. So we're so us. rowdy. I'm so sick of us. <laughs> I'm so sick of us. Maybe the gay South Africans are better. Is it different? No, because the straight thing it's is, just the same. It's do they look the after same. you? Like, do they get you bags and stuff? I mean, I think I'm a great... I'm a great lover. Not on your side. I'm saying on his side. No, I think I'm good at convincing people to do the things that I want them to do for me. So would you like them to like buy you bags like Gucci and Louis? Yeah, I mean, we love a bag and a shoe. Really? Yeah. Oh, you're the same as us, girls. Yes, we love a bag and a shoe. Same now? But I actually want like, buy me a car. Okay, I get that. Like I saw Lundy got two like BMWs. I want to I want someone to go <laughs> Lundy, buy me please a tell car. us. How did Lads, you get that? How did you get please. the two? Listen. Yeah, dude, I was an M4 and like an X6. Like, yeah, can, like an R8. But I'm not trying to pay for it. No? Yeah? No. How is it? Because, you know, I'm not being weird. Though. Yeah. But I've always imagined like two lesbian couples. Yeah. But it gets tricky because one is always more masculine than yeah. the other one. So when it gets into a fight, would you be like, my man gonna beat you up, but technically she's yes, a woman. So what happens like in a, in a gay I mean, relationship? I think like it's very important. I try not to have heteronormative roles in, yeah. in our relationships um, because it is two men at the end of the day. But if you have to uh, rock, will you rock? I'm a rock star, babe. <laughs> like if, if you catch me on the wrong day, hey, like really? wrong day, right time. I'm that guy. Especially I'm very protective of... of um, my friends and, and my cousins and my sisters, like, uh, I, and I mean, when I talk about my sisters, it's, they're actually just my friends, but we've grown so close mm. that they've become family, family to me over the years, like over 10 years of friendship. Um, and I think there was a time in the club, like at Sumo, like someone was trying it and I was like, and my cousin was like, you can't do this, you're a singing guy. Oh my God. But like, generally, I, I can hold my own. But I do like to, to date someone who I feel like can protect me and yeah. really make me feel like a baby. Because I'm a little bit of an egg at home here. Like, when I get into my place, yeah. I'm like, mm, Is that a crazy energy? I'm a baby, energy. yes. I love the crazy energy. It is Aquarius energy, you such a teddy bear. Baby. We, we are babies, the biggest one. The biggest one. Do you guys want to yeah. be coddled and stuff? But outside, the you have whole a mouth time. on you. Yeah, but outside, it's like, nah. But <laughs> the truth is, like, I'm such a baby. Okay, so tell me about astrology. What is this, like, fascination with astrology with you? Because you're always like, oh, uh, my God, Daddy, you look like a toy. Like, Excuse me. <laughs> and I ask you, are you dating a... Yeah. No, so I got into it quite recently. I think... Um, I think o over time, I've been around people who uh, pay attention to astrology a lot, like, oh, your phone is broken, it's retrograde. Oh, oh this is happening, all of these kinds of things. Mm. So I started reading up on it as well, and I started to see similarities within my own personality with kind of um, the, the character uh, stereotypes that exist amongst different kinds of uh, star signs. And so when I did see it in different people and in combinations of people. I was like, okay. And the more I learned about it, then I could pick up when someone walks in. I'd be like, ooh, you've That's got a, a fish face. You are a Pisces. Oh my gosh, and I hate <laughs> Pisces, Loki. There's so many people. March, if you tell me March. No, March Pisces is the word. And I told you this, uh, though. Did you, did you told me this, I no? told you. Tristan Thompson? He's a Pisces. He's a March Pisces. It makes sense. I got traumatized by a Pisces yeah. in the city. He told me his girlfriend was his but cousin. <laughs> I swear to God, I remember my lady. If you remember me from, from Varsity, he told me you were his cousin. It's funny. I really believe yeah, it. It's funny. I always find that a lot of Pisces don't stay in relationships for a long time. No. Nah. And like if you look at like famous Pisces, they they're generally mostly single. Rihanna was like single for a long time. She's a Pisces. She's a so Pisces. They're savages. But she's a Feb Pisces. Are they different? Yeah, it's a little bit. They're like if if Aquarius is like in their head like weird, mm. they're like outwardly weird. Oh. Like my friend Zoe Mudicha, mm. she's a Pisces, and I think that like she also kind of embodies um, an energy that's just like I don't know, man. It's strange sometimes, like the things that she says and does. But like 
but they're lovable still. So, yeah, Pisces know, are Pisces very too. interesting. Mm -hmm. Taurus, very stubborn. Mm -hmm. It's always... Go for it on her bullshit, that's Exactly. Taurus. Very much. Um, Leo. Egotistical. Stubborn. Egotistical. They think they know everything. Sagittarius will Ego, never... Ego, Leslie Mampe. Sagittarius will He's never apologize. Sagittarius. Never, ever. We feel like Casper on your head. <laughs> He's angry at everybody. He'll never Doesn't apologize. apologize. <laughs> He'll never okay. apologize. Okay, <laughs> that is so true. Uh, but they're actually really smart. Okay, yeah. I'd, I'd, I and, and even if you want to argue it, like the truth is that they actually do know a lot of shit. Yeah, but I mean, can you apologize also? Ah, they won't do it. They'll show you that they're sorry. <laughs> They'll show you, but they won't. They won't say anything. I don't know. It's like when your mom like is angry at you, but then she just knocks on the door and she goes, Are you hungry? "The food is ready." Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that. <laughs> I actually can't do it. <laughs> Okay, so astrology, then numerology. Yeah. I know seven is very important and significant. Yes. You. Every album has to have seven in it. Yes. So, yo, that. you did your research. Listen, can you see all these people in this room? <laughs> I'm yeah. paying for shit, yeah. Definitely, I'm definitely about the numerology. I mean, even when I, even when I move into a place, like the house number means a lot to me. Really? Because it affects the kind of experience you'll have in that house. So tell me about seven. Right. Because I thought seven's unlucky. Seven is the number of completion, right? But mm -hmm. you also must be ready for things to be finished. Yeah. So for me, the reason why the albums usually come out at a combination of seven. So it could be like the number 25. Okay. Because two plus five is seven. Oh. Um, yeah, things like, or like a nine, like where then you can minus a two and then it's a seven. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, things like that. Oh, so, so it's like Beyonce with a little four. Like yeah, like so a, like four is also like a really powerful number. Like, I don't, eight actually. Eight is like the number of genius. Okay. Like Kanye is born on the number eight. Okay. A lot of people who are genius are born on, on, on the eighth. Really? Oh, yeah. And then ones and tens are like also like. Wait, so does the 18th count? 18th is a 9, because it's 8 plus, eight plus one. 1. Damn. That, that means it's a 9. Okay, I'm the 18th. <laughs> I'm a genius, Loki. It's a 9. It's a 9. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so there's, there's different kinds of theories behind numerology. And I think if, 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 if we look at it in terms of how we, we try to understand our experience of the universe, we do it in a, numer in a numerical way, yeah. you know, the way that we calculate our time on Earth, um, a day, things like that. All of that is kind of based on, on this concept of time, which yeah. is numbers at the end of the day. And even computers is just numbers. Yeah. You know what I mean? X's it's like a zero, one, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, that kind of thing. So I find it interesting. And I think it's the Aquarius brain. Like, I, I think I'm always trying to be a little bit left of center. No. Even, if when I, even, if, even if I'm not trying to do it, it kind of happens on its own. That's dope. So wait, the the element for Aquarius is that water. It's actually it air? air. Oh, because you think Aquarius, yes, aqua, it's, it's air. It's actually air. It's an air sign. Okay, because I feel like you have a really strong connection or like significance to rain. Like yes, a lot of your music. Love the rain. Tell me about that. You're all about your elements. Yeah. Um, do you know what it is? I think it comes from growing up and I think humans are the only animal that can actually smell the rain before it comes. Oh my uh, gosh, you know what you reminded me of, sorry, before you got to what? me, it was at the white chicks, which is like, I can tell that it's about a rain <laughs> from the <laughs> What was it? It is it white, white chicks. chicks. It's like, it, it is can, white it's chicks. Yeah, it is raining, white chicks. And it's literally raining. Yeah. Sorry, okay, so the, the there's like a chemical <laughs> element that only uh, we can pick up. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like a... Carbon something, I forgot the name of it. Yeah. Uh, and that's what the smell of the rain is. And, and humans can smell it before the rain even comes. And I think that there's a nostalgia about the smell of the rain, the feeling of the rain that I have. And because I'm such an emotional, romantic kind of person, I've always enjoyed the idea of like laying on a couch and watching the rain with the person that I love. Mm. And just like, cause I'm all about like those moments. That's like really what I work so hard for is to have the time and the luxury to share a life with someone and just do things that are 
fun. Also, the rain makes people stay home, so it's nice. Oh, uh, you want like us to say, "Wanna groove?" You no, know, as groove, <laughs> put on Sunday blues. Stay home. Have have your person next to you. Make a cup of tea. I don't know. There's kind of like it, it, I feel like there's a ritual that I have when it rains that I really really enjoyed because I had to unlearn some of um, the trauma of rain because. Mm. You know, when you grow up with your grandmother, because I spent the first six years of my life with my grandmother. And as soon as, because we grew up in Joburg, right? Yeah. And it's thunderstorms. As soon as you hear cuckoo, cover the mirrors. Switch <laughs> off the TV. <laughs> like, you need to, like, it's like this moment of, like, stillness. Yeah. Right? Switch and it's like, what is, up, what, like, what is happening, right? Mm. But actually what happened in those moments is that we spoke a lot and we we shared with one another but also i love to take a bath and so they say you shouldn't be doing it but i generally take a bath when it starts to rain because i just find it to be such a therapeutic Submerging. feeling of yeah. just like feeling just covered and 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 just just immersed i don't know element. immersed in, in an experience that 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 really feels it's nostalgic. It's very nostalgic for me. I think it reminds me of being a child. Yeah. A lot. It reminds me of being young. It reminds me of, of, of fun experiences. But also, my grandmother plays a big role in who I am. Yeah. I love tea because of my grandmother. The ritual of making a cup of tea, tea for myself every single day is because it reminds me of her. I hate the cold. Mm. Um, to, the, to an extent that um, I, I will literally like iron clothes, even if they're ironed, so that when I come out of the bath, they're warm. Oh, because that's how I was raised. So, right? But you also have an old soul then. It's going to be very it's old soul It's my granny. Today. It's because I lived with my granny. Is your you granny still I mean? alive? No, she's passed. So maybe she's possessed I you think a it's a little like bit of her, you know what you. I mean? I think it's yeah. a little bit of her presence with me. And so my mom always says that when I was living at the cliff with my grandmother, I would wake up and like the coal stove would be on already. So the kitchen would be warm mm. and then she would bathe me and then there'd be a heater in the bedroom. So she'd take me out of the bath and then like tussle me by the heater and then the clothes cold. are like super warm. And then I'd be wearing warm clothes and I'd be waiting for the transport like by the welcome Dover. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and then the transport would come, and I'd be like off to the suburbs and go to go to go to um, preschool. That's amazing. I remember all, my time with my grandmother a lot. That's amazing. Yeah. How old did you say you were in your You, I stayed with her until I was six, seven. That's actually my amazing formative before. years. You know, like the and the you years that. the the years where you get your trauma. <laughs> Everything that you're dealing with as an adult happened yeah. between zero and seven. You know, everything. Everything about yourself that you're trying to uh, uh, unravel or deal with or, or, or figure out really happens in that time, whether it's neglect, whether it's uh, abandonment, all of those things, that, that happens then, right? So I always mm. say to my partners that I kind of have an avoidant attachment style, so I will leave you before, before you, you hurt me, me you know? and. Mm it's because my mom left me with my grandparents. Mm. And it's not that she left me because she didn't want me, she left me because she was going to work mm. to raise me, right? That but then I always grew up seeing my mom on the weekend mm. and then she would go at the end of it, yeah. right? And I clearly knew who my grandparents were, but I also knew who my mom was. And so when she did leave, or if she came after work and came to say, say hello and bring me a sweet, but that moment didn't last, she always left. And so the yearning, has kind of lived on into my adult life. Yeah. Um, and so because of that, it's affected the way that I navigate the world. So I get that. Being a kid is... is it's traumatic. It's traumatic. It's traumatic. <laughs> Talking about that, though, I know, well, your real name is Nkosi Nati. Yes. But Langa means the sun, which is your dad's surname, yes. and Mabuso is your mom's. Yes. So what was the thought process behind that, of that being your stage name? and what that means to you. Yeah, so the reason why I decided to use both my surnames f as my stage name was because as I was navigating through life as a young African man, identity becomes a, a huge topic uh, of self-discovery. Mm. And so I knew that, I knew my stepdad's family 
were not my biological family and not because I was treated badly by them or that I had an unpleasant experience, but because you have the auntie who goes, I don't know that Timba has a child this old. Is this, are oh, you sure you're so and so's child? Like there's yeah. little things that happen in family dynamics that make you feel like an othered, right? And mm -hmm. so my experience at school as a queer kid made me feel othered. And then obviously I'm with my, I grew up with my stepdad's family because my mom married him when I was two. And even then there were moments of me feeling um, not fully part of who they were. I didn't see people who looked like me. I didn't see people who were Zulu because I knew I was Zulu. Where were you and from? They were Sutu. Where were you? We grew up here in Joburg. Oh, okay. But in you're the around south, Sutu. Yeah. But my, <clears throat> my, my stepdad's family are Sutu. And then my dad is Zulu from KZN. Mm. So I think in that, in that journey of trying to discover myself and identify myself with him, because I definitely knew who he was and I, I'd met him and I'd spent some time with him and his kids and his wife. Uh, I wanted some sort of attachment to him, but I was never willing to change my surname to his. To your dad? Or? To my dad's surname. So long as your dad's surname? Though. Long as my dad's surname, oh, okay. my voice was my mom's and I've always used my mom's surname okay. throughout school, throughout life. And so as I was coming of age, the question of like, are you going to keep Mm. Mavuso is your surname. I always felt like a Mavuso. Mm. You know, I always felt like a child from Deep Cliff. I always felt like Martha and Maxwell's child. Yeah. I always felt like those were the people who raised me and those were the people who deserved recognition of who I am. But I also wanted to not lose myself in the journey. And, and I think it, the thought of it was also, if I have kids, I would like for them to know that Langa is also their surname. Yeah. So they mustn't go and meet someone at school whose surname is Langa and start dating them. Oh, and then, then, then you have like, like <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. Do you know what I, I mean? Hear you. Um, so that was the thinking be behind that. But also, more than anything, just to honor them both. Yeah. So that when you do say, and now, Langa yeah. Mavuso, it's still there. You, you kind there. of give an acknowledgement to both parts of who I am. Yeah. And um, you it's allow me like, to. like Nakai is not my name. What? No, Nakai is a name that my grandmother wanted me to be named. No. My name is Nadia Kandava. I grew up as Nadia Lamini, by the way. I changed my surname when I was 16. Crazy. So Nadia Nakai is a way of me paying homage to my grandmother. To be like, even though it's not on my ID, the whole world is going to know the name that she yes. you know, me called. So I completely That remember. is beautiful. Thanks. I love it because actually when I do play shows and they say my name, mm. I can feel it. Like, it's like your like, glosses are all Yeah, I really can feel Wasn't it. Wasn't you who dreaming about lions? Yes, I told ancestors. you. I was yeah. dreaming about because that's how I know that I'm protected. What's your totem though? Is it lion? I wouldn't know actually. So you're very, you're not extremely spiritual and that, that kind of I, I am more Christian than I am traditional. Super, like I, the ancestry thing, I tried it out. I think your 20s is the time to explore all of those things and figure out. But I'm at the end of my 20s now and I've like made a clear decision that like this is what... church is definitely who I am. Mm. That's my center. That's my grounding. That's where I find myself. I mean, it's obviously a difficult space because mm. you have to reconcile that parts of your identity are almost mm. uh, shunned or maybe excluded. But then when you look at it in a historical context, Blackness was not included yeah. uh, in, 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 in that uh, denomination. Um, and so when you do um, some research as well on, on, on the Bible and, and uh, its translations and interpretations, uh, the word homosexual didn't exist in the Bible until the 1940s. Oh, hectic. Right? And so before that, in the Hebrew translation, that verse, and I hope no one comes for me, but it was actually really about uh, pedophilia. So th those verses that spoke about that were about a man laying with a boy. Oh, so they're talking about pedophilia. About pe with a, which was speaking about pedophilia. Yeah. And it's something that I'd like to explore further and, 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 and study more, just so that I also have a... a why though? Truthful understanding. Because the Bible means a lot to me. I understand, but I still feel like the Bible does need an iOS update. There's a new there's an old testament and a new testament and we Absolutely. need a new 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 testament. 
because I think there's a lot of things. I mean, there's things that we're not supposed to be eating. Yeah. But I feel like maybe we're not supposed to eat that because back then we're not supposed to be sitting on this couch. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not supposed to be polyester. I mean, but what if polyester was hard back in the day? Then I said actually, no, down with polyester. The mixing of two materials of two cloths was uh, looked down upon. But what if they didn't have the skills to mix two cloths? So therefore, they said actually, Vele, let's ban it. And then that's how it became in the Bible. And you now see, we know. I don't, I don't, I don't even want to stress. What I, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like this one time when but the world was seen as flat. Yeah. And now it's round and we can get on boats and get yeah. stuff. You so know? that's my thing is that like I'm not a theologian. And so I haven't studied theology. I don't know the book in that in-depth way. What I do know is that I connect with God and the Holy Spirit really well. And I, and I feel grounded and I feel centered. Do you see God in your life? Absolutely. So that's why I'm asking you, why do you want to understand <clears throat> that notion in the Bible? Because it doesn't change the relationship you have with God. Because my un- because life. because the begin the beginning of my understanding of God comes from that Bible. Does it? Still. Okay. Do you know what I mean? It, Mine never the, did. So the encounter with God comes from church for me, okay. and I can't denounce the fact that that place is in informed by this book. Mm. Right, and so it's important for me to understand it, uh, not in a way that is comfortable for me only, but in a way that feels truest to mm. me. Right, because yes, we definitely interpret it in our own ways, and there's things that we've deemed heavier than others. But I want to make that decision for myself. Mm. I don't want to dictate it to me, and I don't want to blindly. Uh, reject certain notions in order to make myself feel comfortable in that space. I get that. So talking about your relationship with God, <laughs> we both know how 2023 has been the yeah. absolute pits yeah. for the both of us. Yeah. One, I want to know currently today, how are you feeling? Yeah. Like what space on the spectrum are you at? Oh, yeah. This year has been really, really tough. I think for both of us in in a huge way. Um, right now, I'm in a really good place. Mm. Um, I just think that I've surrounded myself with people who keep me uh, quite grounded and happy. I see a therapist twice a week. Yeah. Um, and I do the things that make me happy. Mm. If it does make me happy, I'm just not doing it. Like, I'm mm. not, I don't have to. Mm. And I found myself in a place where uh, I've had the blessing of being able to engage only in the things that bring me joy. Mm. Um, You know, when February happened, um, it's so funny. So, Keenan passes and I go to Les's house and then they all decide to go to to you and they see you. I speak to our manager and obviously you guys asked me to sing at the memorial. And so I do the performance at the memorial, which almost broke me, man. Mm. Because a year before that, I had done Lumko's memorial. Mm. Two months before Lumko's memorial, I had done Busilo Gai's memorial. Before that, I had done Mama Winnie's private memorial. Mm. And so I had been in this kind of cycle of doing a bunch of memorials of friends or people close to me or close to people around me, right? Mm. And so... After I got off stage for, for, for Keenan's memorial and, I, and uh, my phone was blowing up because I think Cairo was like really emotional, emotional during, during my performance, mm. um, I said to Pindi, this is the last memorial I'm doing. And she was like, okay, babe, it's fine, it's fine. And I was okay. like, I promise you, like, I just can't do it again. Mm. And then two weeks later, I had to... Do it for someone you love personally. Yeah, I had to go and do it as as a partner mm. you know and i had to i had to um do you know like you know when Lindsay died um i was on stage doing mm. a technical rehearsal with an orchestra big dream of mine when i wrote sunday blues because i wrote sunday blues a week into dating Lindsay. really how long were you guys together for eight years Eight yeah. years on and off. Mm. You know how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eight years. Um, but he met me when I was 21. Um, and I was at UCT. And he 
had already started doing his television shows. Um, and I had gone to watch his sister uh, perform. So I'd flown up to Joburg to surprise her. Mm. Um, and then I met, so I'm, this guy walks into the theater. He's late, first of all. The play is already in progress. But, but um, as, he, as he sits down, he turns around and he smiles. And my heart went boom, 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 boom. <laughs> like and in the cartoons. Dark, <laughs> babe. Like we're in a theater. Yeah. So I can't even see him. But I say to a friend of mine, I was like, Who I need to meet guy? this person. Yeah. Um, show ends. I brought uh, swanky flowers. Um, so I take the flowers and the balloons to her. He waits there. And then he says to me, oh, can you take a picture of us? And I'm like, sure. Um, and then he says, oh, no, please take it on your phone. I, you have a better phone than me. So I'm like, cool, cool, cool. Because I can have your number. And then he's like, how me. can you, how am I going to get the picture? I was 21. I was so down. <laughs> I had what he was no doing. idea. But I had no idea. Yeah. So then we spoke later and then started dating. Um, but he had lost his dad two weeks prior to that play, mm. right? And so in, in the beginning of our relationship, I felt like he wasn't present. And I felt like we stuff. were falling in love, but like he wasn't letting, in, letting me into the, the, the sadness of it, right? Yeah. And so when I say the rain keeps falling, it's really about his tears, mm. right? The fact that he had so much tears that he was holding back, but he was hiding it with gifts and uh, love acts of you. love. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And I was like, I just need you to be present with me so we can enjoy this love. So that's when I wrote Sunday Blues. And I said to him, oh, my biggest dream, when it became like a really big hit, I said to him, my biggest dream is to perform this song with an orchestra. And so the night that he passes, I'm on stage with a 50-piece orchestra doing a technical rehearsal for, for Sunday Blues. And my dream is coming true. And the wind starts to move in a way Wasn't that it was Wasn't he supposed to join you? He was supposed, he was to, supposed come down. to fly in that night. Yeah. And his sister calls me in the afternoon, tells me he's not feeling well. She asks me to call a doctor. Mm. All of my doctor friends are not available. So I call my aunt. My aunt goes to his house. She drives him to the hospital. She drives him to the hospital. And then I hear nothing back from everyone for the mm. whole day. And as I'm doing the sound check, the wind is moving funny. We're doing the show on a wine farm, so there's lights in the garden, right? Wow. And so the lights just went off one really? by one by one by one. And as the last light went off, as the song was ending, the wind left me and the last light went off. And I walked off stage and I said to the director, I said, he's gone. Did you say that? I said, he's gone. And they called me two hours later. Saying and he's said, gone. he's gone. I think you can feel it though. Yeah. There's something that changes in your spirit. It's crazy, you know, because I think he could feel it because of the way he was talking to me at the time. Mm. Um, he would say things... Like the email. Yeah, How like the email I told you that mm. he said, I love you until my demise, you know. And the way that we would sign off our emails to each other because mm. we were love letter people, right? Oh, romantic. Um, right? Because <laughs> we, yeah. so, we were away from each other a lot of the times. Mm. But the way we would sign it off was always love first, love always. But this time he had said, I love you until my demise. Mm. Love first, love always. And I was like, demise? Demise? So you're 38. Like, what demise? I did say you 38. <laughs> like to yourself. Your honor, you're you know 38. What I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, so it, it's been difficult. It's been difficult. But, you know, like I've spoken to you. I had to leave the home that we lived in because I just couldn't do it. I, yeah. I started afresh. I was like, let's get a new home, yeah. let's start again, let's just figure things out all over yeah. again. But I think it's been incredible because his family's been incredible to me. Yeah. 22 siblings. He had 22 siblings? Yeah. Oh, but weren't you like also the, I don't know if it's, if it's the right to Mark say, Makoti. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Loki almost on the way there. I'm put there. Um, I mean, they treated me that way yeah. um, because they'd known me all of these years. You know, we spent... I think we were both lucky because we both yeah. had a great experience with the families of the people that we loved yeah. in the past because they treated us really great. They walked, I think they what, what you us. continue to do is still so exemplary like to me because I watched a video of you this past weekend 
um, as you guys were doing your tribute for Keenan uh, at the Joburg oh, yeah. Day show, and Zintle retells a story about how she had to go on stage, but Cairo was getting emotional, and so she left Cairo with you. Mm. Yeah. Shout out to Z, by the way. <laughs> we love you. We love you. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's, that's, that's an incredible thing mm. to possess amongst both of you, to be able to share love in that kind of way and for the families to be kind and generous in that kind of way. Mm. Because I do know stories of people who lose their partners or their husband and after the funeral ends, the family arrives and it's like, Taking everything, you need this to leave couch, the house. You need to go. Because sometimes they're the sometimes they're good to you, yeah. yeah and, and I mean, like, oh, we've seen married, this. We've best. seen this with a close friend, you mm. know, where where so, she was completely shunned from the entire um, from the entire process of 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 preparing for the funeral being and part and, of and it. being a part of it. Because I yeah. think that for that. For that to be taken away from you is such a painful thing, yeah. right? Um, I remember Sibu calling me for Lindsay's memorial, and and hey, <laughs> Lindsay's memorial was crazy. So <laughs> I still had to continue with the show in Cape Town. I was like texting my 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 whole family flew down to Cape Town the, the day the day after he'd passed. Mm. So. <laughs> Imagine we're at a five-star hotel on a vineyard, planning a funeral in this. We're making a matras in a in a in a in a five-star hotel, doing all of these things. And the grace that Lindsay's family gave me, they said, "Whatever you want for the memorial, you tell us. We follow your lead." That's amazing. You know. And so we sat there, and I sent them pictures of the flowers I wanted. I told them which. Church, I wanted it to happen because I go to that church. Mm. Um, I told them, um, you know, who I wanted to perform, who he loved, uh, those kinds of things. And so it was a really, it gave me the opportunity to really say my last goodbye, you mm. know, to him in that way and to have his family give me a private moment with him before the burial just by myself and for, his, for them to allow me to have the final date per se. That was incredible. I love hearing that from you because it just reminds me of what happened with us as well and it was the same way. Like mm. They really allowed me to really be part of the process and choose what he wore, yeah. um, choose the coffin, yeah. um, being able to see him. It was just amazing and I feel like a lot of people were so shocked about that, you know, because it was yeah. a public thing. But a lot of people were so shocked about why it's like that and why it's like this and it's so crazy because that's how it should be. Yeah. You know, it shouldn't be a thing of you fighting. This is the person that they loved who loved you. Yeah. And it's a way of honoring him by continuing to love yeah. you the way that he did, you know. And they still do it to this day. Love that. His that's sisters amazing. call me every week and make sure I'm okay. Yeah. So it's 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 that love continues. So mm. like we said it to each other always. Mm. Love first, love always. So yeah. it lives on through them. I agree. Shout out to the Forbes family. <laughs> Shout out to the <laughs> Okay, let's take it back a little bit. So, um, let's talk about who Nati was when he was 13. Yes. And what do you think that little boy would think about all the accomplishments and the journey that you have done? And if you got an opportunity to speak to that 13-year-old boy, what would you say? Yeah, 13-year-old Nati was so driven like a massive dreamer mm. i would purposefully like try to engineer my dreams to be about what i do now really like i would go to sleep and i'd be like i want to dream about the stage i want to dream about playing like a big <laughs> i want to dream about and i feel like at 13 there. you looked similar like yeah, this yeah absolutely, absolutely, exactly absolutely the same absolutely the same yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit a little bit um but yeah, when I, you know, when I was 13, I'd, I'd known when I was nine years old that I wanted to, be, to become a performer. I had played my first show when I was 12. Mm. Um, I had found out about the National School of the Arts when I was 10, and I wanted to go there to go and pursue music. And so my focus and my mind was already on NSA. Um, and so, oh man, what, I, what, what would I say to myself? Mm. 
you did it, kid. Like did you it. did it. Like you did it. And it's it, it's so important for you to know that um, that you're worthy of love, mm. regardless of talent, regardless of success, regardless of 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 the things of the world. You are still worthy of the love, and even in your identity that you fear so much, uh, what the world will say, what your parents will say, what your family will say. Yeah. There comes a day one day where you come over with your boyfriend for Christmas and they embrace him, incredibly so. And there'll come a day when you step onto a stage mm. and thousands of people lose their minds. So mm. continue to persist, be consistent. And have fun. Yeah. I was like, I had a lot of fun. Yeah. Like I was just and I still continue to do that. Yeah. I think that when it comes to my work, I'm very serious. But outside of my work, I really know how to enjoy myself. Like, on that note, tequila. <laughs> Come on, please. Tequila, tequila, please. tequila, please. please. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, honey. Sangles. It's the same. Cheers. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so some people might say that as artists, we use our craft as a way of comforting ourselves. Yeah. And I know um, you have a song called Love Lost. Yes. As you're working on your new music and your healing process, are you tapping into your craft for that healing or are you just focusing? What is your healing process when it comes to making music? I think, I think the process of writing is very cathartic for me. I think that it is an opportunity for me to kind of face myself which is why the studio is like not my favorite place. Really? Yeah, I don't like studio as much as many other artists do. Yeah. I, I love to perform because I really feel like I live out the music more there. Yeah. Um, but also I think it's because I've already dealt with the things that I'm talking about um, when I'm performing. Whereas oh, when, I when, when I'm... When By the I'm, time it comes you, out, yeah, you've dealt I've with dealt it. I've dealt with it. Yeah. Whereas when you're writing it, you're still processing. Yeah. Right? And so... Love Lost, I had written eight years. So when I was 18, my boyfriend passed away. And so only when I turned 25 did I, was I able to make peace with it and, and accept that, right? Mm -hmm. And so in that song, I kind of release him and, 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 and give him back to God and say, you know what? How do you know you're ready to release them? Because I don't think I'm ready. Oh my God. How do you know? Do you know? It's I don't know. It's, it's made losing Lin Sui. Uh, Being able to. It's allowed me easier. to release him sooner. Sooner. Because of that experience. Because I didn't want to go through another decade of grief and sadness. Do you know what I mean? Because he had to be with me in the midst of me still grieving, right? You need to write a book. So, How am I going to do it? <laughs> like what, what you, know, you know what? You, you wake up and the feeling that you have that morning, you deal with it. You know, I like, hate this that's feeling. That's all you do. That's all you do. I hate There's this no feeling. Formula. And now you're telling me you had it for eight years. So you're telling me I'm yeah, gonna feel this way for eight yeah. years. It might take. It might take less. It might take longer. There's. I think there's an interview where Anela is speaking to Gareth, hmm. and she speaks about losing her mom, right? And it's one of the first things I saw after losing Lenny. Um, and she spoke about how her mother's death could have shattered her for life mm. or she could have come back from it strong and she chose to be strong and to find strength in it and to try to make her proud in every single thing she does. Because there's people who in their grief, uh, that shattering is something that they can't come back from mm. and they stay there forever. Mm. You know what I mean? And because, and when, and when you have, when you have um, the opportunity or the strength or the support system, or the, or, 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 or just the right, the right ground to to get through it. Um, I say take that route, the route of, 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 of rising above. You know, because even in the process of writing this album, um, it's about being hopeful for me. You mm -hmm. know, uh, the beginning of the album really does explore the grief, and it speaks to the place that I'm in, but. As we go more into the album, I'm very much open to new love. Mm. You know, I'm very much open to falling in love again. I'm very open to sharing a life with someone again. I'm very open to 
to to to being goo goo gaga for someone and like really having Building a, a life great and getting married in Paris. And getting married. <laughs> you know, we don't have to do it in Paris. We can do it in Lake Como. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it for you. Um, but yeah. but I, but the the album explores that, right? So. The first song is written by myself and Manana, mm. um, and it's one of the singles that will come out soon. I can't wait for and, that song. And that song is oh, gut wrenching. We because, have a song too that's also very painful. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a song with Younger Chief that's also dust. You know what I mean? Um, but are you guys gonna cry? Yeah, the next no. couple of months you're gonna it's feel our season. pain. It's crying season. <laughs> It's not silly season, it's yeah. crying season. So yeah. in the beginning I explore that, but as I explore it, I also kind of go into how much I've relied on my faith mm -hmm. during this time to get me through. Candace and I have been going to church a lot together, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we go to cell group on Wednesdays and we try to go to church on Sunday together. Um, and if I don't go with her, I'll go with my mom. My mom and I wake up every single day and we start the morning together with a prayer, and then we end the, the, the day together. No matter how busy we are, we have a phone call and we speak. And so those kinds of things within my support system that have allowed me to get through this year and to get through this time are the things that I talk about. The, I, I, I've written a song for myself and share, which I think a lot of people have wanted me to do gospel, mm. but this kind of touches on that spiritual side of me. The song speaks to how much my faith has gotten me through. And then we also just get a little bit happier and speak to what my idea of a new love looks like. Okay, you so that's know? the next chapter. Yeah. New love. Yes. I want that for you so bad. I deserve it. I don't it. see I that for myself, we do. but I love that for you. It might take time for you. I don't think so. I'd rather it just get a surrogate. You. Would you donate like your sperm and one day when I want to have a kid? Because that's the only option. No ways. My children are mine. I'm a Zulu man. How what? Thank you so much, Langa, for Thank being you for here. Having you broke me. my podcast virginity. <laughs> I heard from a little birdie that your favorite flowers are pennies, pennies, yes, peonies, peonies. <laughs> are they also from the Like to give you some peonies. Ah! Say thank you so you much. You guys are wild. <laughs> I love it. You love it. I actually went to go buy myself flowers today because I you? was like, no one buys me flowers. I bought you flowers, babe. <laughs> Thank you Thanks, so much, girl. I love Thank you. Thank you. Ah, I'm so happy you Guys, these them. open up and they look incredible they when do, they do. Really? It's like, and it's like pink in the it middle. It becomes like super huge. Imagine a rose times like... Five. Yeah. Like it's huge it's and bulky. It's humongous. And they're only in season for six weeks of the of the year. And guess what I did? Yeah, you got them. Welcome to Hello Brother. Aww. Thank you so much, Langa. I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching the first official episode of Hello Brother. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your people. And we'll be back with another episode very soon. Love you. That was so good. <laughs> Oh, my God.